you know, in hearing the mothers, hearing the cries from the mothers, it should have been so silent. Because if you haven't lost a child, come on now. And if you don't think you're gonna lose a child, because Allah said that He will try you with your children and with your wealth and with your very life. Come on now. This is not something to play with. If you think your little straight A student, your little honor roll student, it's not going to meet little June bug on the block that you done moved away from. They're going to run across them one day. And it's either get down or lay down. Now when the police kill one of us, they don't ask our religion. I'm pretty sure they didn't ask your son their religion. When they saw his body, life, his body laying on the side of the road. In 1989, at the age of 16, I myself was subjected to the correctional prison or institution. They call it a correctional institution. I was facing 27 years with three years mandatory. I've been shot over four times. Here's a man that's standing before you with over 50 some bullets in him from a sawed off shotgun in Mossberg from my head down to my legs. <clears throat> See? The nine millimeters went in and out. At the age of 13 is when I got ambushed by grown men in the Rose Park Project. Now you may say, what a 13, 14 year old boy being ambushed by grown men. See, when you place, when you design a community that is fixed on subjecting the people to violence and crime and we're going hungry and you got food in your house or coming in your house. I may ask first. I may even knock on the door. But if I know you got food in your house and I don't have any in my house, I'm coming in your house and I'm going to feed my family. So you can't tell a drug dealer on the block who's making three to four thousand dollars in one night you can't tell that man about no Jesus. You can't tell that man about no Muhammad. You can't tell that man about Allah. See? You have to tell him about something that he needs and crave for, and that's food, clothing, and shelter. Then he might just listen to you. But when, if our minds are not reformed, then there's no prison that can reform us. You first have to have a self-examination, self-reflection, self-improvement. See? We can sit in a mosque and pray all day. It's when you get off of your knees and go to work Come on now. in the community. When was the last time, and this no shade intended, I'm talking to myself too, my mouth is closer to my ears than it is to yours. So I hear my thoughts first, I'm talking to me too. But well, let me go backwards. Slow living, Brother Adam. Beautiful. I'm going to jump hers because we've been here for quite a while and I want to just hit it and quit it. And forgive me for my passion, but I don't apologize for the truth. Come on now. My brother spoke on Belal, Rabbi Lauhan. An Ethiopian prisoner of war. He was not a slave. He refused to be a slave. See, a slave being in battle. A slave is one who give up his manhood in order to be pumped by the taskmaster. He wasn't a Muslim. He didn't become a Muslim after he met Prophet Muhammad salam, he just bear witness that Muhammad was his messenger. But he was a Muslim already in his heart. Because he said, a heart of Allah, one God. He was already calling on the one God before he met Prophet Muhammad salam, And he told the Prophet salam, I'll follow you. 
But please know that I have a desire to kill my oppressor. And the prophet did not repudiate it. He did not kick against it. Brother Adam, is this the truth? Did he not allow him to kill his oppressor? Did his oppressor die by the hands of Belial? When we tell the story, we have to tell the whole story, not that he purposely left it out. But when you see cities burning down, buildings burning down, it is because we are the we come from the lineage of the land, rather than And we have been oppressed for over 400 and some odd years. And so, like Bilal, we say, well, okay, we've been oppressed for 400 and some odd years. We have a desire to repudiate and go against and fight against the oppressor who oppressed us for the 400 and some odd years. Is there racism in Islam? Yes. Is there racism in Christianity? Yes. Is there racism in Jehovah, in Jehovah Witness and all religions? Yes. Is there racism and division in your own homes? Yes. You may say black lives matter, but your grandmother may say they don't matter to me. I heard my brother Adam and it moved me because we need more brother Adams to have the passion in speaking about the black holocaust. Yes, sir. Yes. Because if you can force your oppression on me. And you can tell me about the Israelites, how they was oppressed in the time of Moses. If you can tell me about the Thamud people, how they hamstrung a camel after God, Allah, told them to leave her and let her have her dream. But they hamstrung the camel. If you want me to cry my eyeballs out over a camel from, from being pre pre prevented from having a dream, then why can't I cry my eyeballs out over the black woman and the black man and the black child that's been placed in a wretched condition, no, that's right. set upon by a world that hate our very shadow? Now, if this troubling you or bothering you in some kind of way, then I'm talking to you. But if I'm not, if it doesn't bother you, then it shouldn't move you. It shouldn't move you. The old saying said, if you throw a rock, it's the dog, and somebody holler in the crowd, that's what it is. They didn't give this man a ticket from taking this family's son. They didn't even consider doing a blood test, and he was going to gamble. See? He was going to the casino. And I'm pretty sure they didn't give him a ticket. He went to the casino. If they didn't arrest him, he went to the casino with blood on his car. I know about the killings that take place in the penitentiary. I know about um, K. Wayne Slim, <laughs> Nigga Charlie, Chicken George. You don't know about them in the Florida State Prison. They got a man called K. Wayne Slim. About my height, my weight. He's so skinny that his back pockets touch when he walk. <laughs> and his feet so big, he about 13, he was about a 12 or 13 shoe. And he had, see these goals in my mouth? Don't judge me, I had these things since 1987. Since 1987, this part, had, this was, this part of our culture. Yep. We come from a people who love gold. That's right. But after becoming Muslim, I learned a little more. So now that I know better, I'll do a little better. Yes, sir. But don't, don't judge what's on my mouth, judge what's coming out of my mouth. Okay. In closing, K. Wayne Slim at a prison called Lake Butler. Come on now. When you go to this prison, you have to walk this lonely aisle called K. Wayne. And when you get into this prison, you are approached by a group of Freemasons. And they all are correctional officers. Not all Freemasons are bad. It's a beautiful system of morality. It's a beautiful system 
of tools and signs and symbols that many have used to correct their own life, correct their lives as being a rough action. But K. Wayne Stem used to kick the goals out of inmates' mouth. And they had a jar full of gold teeth of inmates. There was one particular inmate I remember, I will never forget him. He came in about 2 o'clock that morning, no, probably about 11, and he was killed around about 2 o'clock that morning because he didn't say yes, sir. The man was so scared that every time the officer asked him a question, he said, yeah, no, yeah. He said, what, what? And they surrounded him. So imagine you in handcuffs and cuffs and you shackled. And they're trying to force you to say yes, sir. You want to say yes, sir, but you know, you come from the good hood, but you just say, yeah, no, but no man was present in your home. So you never said yes, sir, to no one, because you never had a father. See? So this man kept saying, yeah, and I heard a loud scream by two or three o'clock that morning. And never heard that man again. When we woke up, there was tape on our windows. See? You couldn't see out. Thank you, brother. I mean, not tape, it was a long sheet, like a, I don't know what it was, but they had those cells where you couldn't see out. And they went down every cell that they passed. They had the, the, the guard right there so the inmate that's in the next cell couldn't see what was going on in the hallway. But the point I'm making is that your child, sister, I don't know where you are, but the lady is, your child is not, wasn't the only child and not going to be the only child unless you, me, us, we get involved. I'm looking at these young men over here, and I'll close. Please forgive me for being long with me. That's my heart right there, the youth. I'm going to say this personally to y'all. See how my young brother back there smiling. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna turn back around. Turn back around. I'm gonna single you out for a minute. I'm not gonna punch you, I'm gonna single you out for a little bit. I don't think no one back there is over the age 20. Who at that table over the age 20? Imagine these children who over there at the age 16. Anybody under age 16? Where's Brother Jalil? Yes, sir. Quick thinking, fast moving, so. Here's a brother at the age of 16, 15, who was subjected to the Florida prison system for murder. 15 years. 15 years. Just to find out my brother was innocent, but he did the time. I have another brother, when I was younger, in the Florida State Prison, who was an influence to me. Can you stand up, brother Tawheed? Tawheed, Oh, He was my OG, and I watched him from afar, and he influenced me to come into his slums. We have another brother, y'all heard from him earlier today, Brother Reggie. Stand up, brother. Let him see you again. Another brother that I watched from afar. Don't be ashamed of being of, of, of being uh, subjected to the prison system. You, know, you was in prison when you was born, right, right here in America. Right. But they didn't make us bitter; it's making us better. So Allah say, don't let the bitter, the, the hatred of others, turn you bitter. Right. Right. the book. We have Brother Keith on the wall right there. I just want you to see what prison reform looked like. There you go. It's Brother Keith on the wall. How many years you did, soldier? Six years. Now, when I got out of prison, I met a brother named Hakeem Akil. I didn't want to go home. I said, Mama, whoever sent you this uh, newspaper, I want to meet them. I went straight from the Greyhound, straight to Brother Hakeem Akil's corner. And I met Brother Hakeem, and he took me on his wing. I'm going to show you how, what it's going to take for us 
to assist in the reformation of an enemy that's coming out that want to do right. I haven't had a charge, I haven't been convicted of any crime or charge since 1989. Here it is, these young brothers, young men, our future. If I ask them right now to raise their hand, do you know about Emmett Till? Have you ever heard of an Emmett Till? Stand up, young brother. Okay. Thank you, brother. Emmett Till was 13, 14 years old. And he was killed because they said he whistled at a white woman. Even if he whistled at a white woman, listen what happened to him. They put a shotgun in his mouth. Sure Blowed the back of his head out. Mississippi. Took his private parts and shoved it in his mouth. What it did. Cut his ears off. Slit his throat. Mutilated him. I mean, they did him something bad. Gorged his eyes out. He was unrecognizable. And then they asked his mother, Say, I don't think we should have a closed, I mean, open casket. She said, No, I want the world to see what y'all did to my baby. What she said. See? So when we talk about events that occurred, uh, Brother uh, Adam, in all due respect, when we talk about events in the Bible, in the Quran, or any other historic facts, these are recent facts. Just a few years ago, that was in 1955. Right. Some of you probably were born in 1955 or earlier than that. But the, I'm, I talked about the tragedy. I want to tie this up with the love that comes out of that. How can love come out of that? Out of tragedy. Allah said, Verily, through every difficulty, there's ease. That's right. The ease is in the difficulty. When I got out of prison, young blood, thank y'all. Brother Aslan, my brother right here. Stand up, Brother Aslan. Brother Aslan, let's give our brother a round of applause. It was Brother Aslan who took me under his wing. It was Brother Aslan who took me out to do Dawah. It was Brother Aslan who came and prayed over my children when they was born. It was Brother Aslan who prayed for me. I love him. I got a rose while you're alive. This is my rose to you. You my brother, I love you. You always been a spiritual guide for me. Thank you. So, in closing, brothers and sisters, forgive me again for being long-winded, winded. Our brother that sitting, seated, seated before me, I want to embrace him because what he has done and is doing and what Allah is going to do further through him right. by the permission of Almighty God Allah, I think we're going to shock the city of Tampa. Right. And young brothers, just know that your life is not just built on sport and play. Reform your mind. Reshape your mind. Get your head up out of the phones all day. Can we bow our heads to the phones or do we bow to a lot? Come on, look at that. See? There's a, there's a type of music that's going around that's affecting the black community called drill music. Yes, sir. If you know what drilling is, drilling is when a man drilling in the military. Some of these brothers that you see with us, these brothers come out of the hood. And now they're coming out of the real hood that's covering their eyes. And they're coming into the light of themselves. We don't want to be sitting in your bushes changing ships. We don't want to be waiting for you to come out of the store and snatch your purse. We don't want to be violating your daughters, violating your sons, and violating you. We don't want to do that. That's because somebody got to us and disturbed our wicked timeline. So now we got to go out there and disturb somebody else's wicked yes, sir. and bring the truth so that he can knock the brains out of all I want to embrace my brother. I want to love.
Come on up, man. Come on, home. Come on. Give that love. Got my mask. It's okay. It's okay. Well, I'll tell you something. What a beautiful day. What a picture, man. Take a good picture of this.